All right, so in the last video, we looked at some of the basic graphs. I left a couple of them up here on the board, right? Uh, basic parabola. Um, this one is also a parabola um, coming from the root function. It just happens to be uh, half of a parabola opening uh, horizontally rather, rather than vertically. Uh, there are, are a number of basic transformations that you can apply to graphs. And, and you can, of course, you can consider these in combination. So you can start with a simple graph and you can apply some number of these in sequence to produce a new graph, right? Um, so one of the things that you will notice if you kind of compare what's going on, right? I've given sort of the what happens to the function in each case. You'll notice that for horizontal effects, you're applying something inside the function, right? You're, you're subtracting a number from x. You're multiplying x by a number. You're putting a minus sign in front of x. Uh, for, for vertical um, transformations, it happens outside the function, right? You do f of x and then you add b. You do f of x and then you multiply. You do f of x and then you apply the minus sign, okay? So horizontal is inside. Vertical tends to be outside. Um, so the, the translations, if, you're, if a is a positive number, something like x minus 3, for example, that's a shift to the right. If a is negative, you're shifting to the left. If it's a stretch, you want to look at, so let's, let's focus on a bigger than 0. Uh, you want to compare if a is between 0 and 1, or is it bigger than 1, OK? If a is between 0 and 1, then what tends to happen is you stretch it out like this. If it's bigger than 1, you kind of squeeze it in, OK? Um, reflection, if you put the minus sign in there, you're reflecting across the y-axis, OK? And then same idea for vertical translation, you're shifting up or down. For the stretch, if b is bigger than 1, you're making it bigger. If it's smaller than 1, you're squishing it down. And reflection, you're reflecting across the x-axis. Um, so for example, if I did something like uh, y equals x minus a, well, let's put a value in, um, x minus uh, 9 squared. And I plotted that. What I would do is I would take my usual parabola and I would go nine units out, and I would draw the graph there. I'm going off the screen, but that's okay. You get the idea. So you just take the usual graph and you'd slide it over, right? If I did something like y equals now, here's one where maybe um, you got to be a little bit careful with the stretches because. Let's say we do something like 2x squared. Um, so this is one of these kind of odd situations where, where a horizontal stretch kind of becomes a vertical stretch because you square the 2, you get 4x squared, right? Um, so it would be similar to if you just took the x squared and multiplied by 4. But what tends to happen in this case is you kind of get the same graph. But now it's kind of narrower, right? Um, that horizontal stretch, it kind of took this and it squished it in a little bit to get a narrower version of the original graph. Um, now, um, if I do f of minus x for, for x squared, nothing happens, right? Because you square, you square minus x, you get x squared. Uh, this happens to be an example of what's called an even function. f of minus x is the same as f of x. Um, so you don't see any uh, effect in this case from a horizontal reflection, right? Reflecting that across the y-axis, nothing happens. Uh, but I could do, if I did, um, if I use the root function instead, if I did say y equals the square root of, of negative x, well, now um, I can't use any positive inputs because the minus sign out front makes it negative. I have to use negative inputs. And what I get in this case is something that Looks like that, right? It goes the other way now instead. Um, if I wanted to, in this example here, maybe we do another example. Uh, if I did something like 
y is the square root of, of x plus 1. Well, that's going to take my usual square root function, shift it one unit to the left, and give me something going up like that. Right? Um, and for the vertical translations, I could do something like, you know, I could do y is equal to, say, x squared minus 1, or I could do y is equal to, let's say, root of x plus 2. And if I, if I were to plot those, this one, I'm taking the regular parabola and I'm shifting it down by one unit. So I get something like that. Uh, I'm taking the square root and I'm shifting it up by two units. So I get something like that, right? Starting at two. Um, so with some basic, uh, with some basic translations, stretches, reflections, you can start with some basic graphs. You can turn them into new graphs. And of course, you could do combinations of these. So I could do something like this. I could do something like um, y equals 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 3, right? So this is now a, a several transformations all in one. In fact, let's even do minus 2. So what would I get if I, if, if I had that? Well, I would start with my basic parabola, my basic squaring function. The plus 1 shifts me one unit to the left. Um, the 2 is going to stretch it by a factor of 2. The minus sign is going to flip it over. And then that minus 3 is going to shift everything down by 3 units. So if I were to plot that, let's say, over here. Um, so now my vertex moves over. right? It's going to move over one unit. right? And then it's going to move down by 3 units. And I would get something like that if I were to plot that function, right? So if you, if you understand the effects of these basic transformations and you know some basic graphs, then somebody can hand you a complicated function like this, or looks a little bit more complicated, um, and you still know how to plot it without having to do any calculus or, or really all that much work, other than knowing some basic examples and knowing what happens when you apply these transformations, what the effect of those transformations are on the graph.